What's up, it's your boy Funky Monkey here, and today we're going to go ahead and do another anti-cheat tutorial. I should note that there was already a new base being developed, and I already did the first tutorial on that. But um, this is going to be a little bit out of order using the old base because I did want to get some detection stuff out without completely having to focus on finishing those other extremely long and detailed tutorials. Um, so whichever base you use hopefully shouldn't matter. Um, so again, today we're going to be making a new no-fall check. And so I guess let's go ahead and get started by making the nofall class inside of our base. Okay, now that we're here, we're going to go ahead and register a move event. Now this is not ideal to use a move event for this kind of check, but um, it is totally fine for our purposes. It's not going to create lag. There's nothing wrong with using bucket events if you're too lazy to you know, make your own packet stuff. Especially for something lightweight and something that doesn't need to be parallelized or anything of a such. This kind of no-fall check and the way we're going to check server ground is we're actually going to look at the player's Y. Now what we can go ahead and do for this is we there's a special little value. Basically is 1 divided by 64 and make sure you put a period here or a D. Because this will be dividing as an integer and you'll get nothing you want. It's very important in Java to make sure Java knows what number, what kind of number format you're using, even if you have this as a double. The reason why we're using this number, or this is just a nice and easy way to type 0 0.015625, so we'll actually leave this commented here, just for reference. And the reason why this is, is because this is the smallest value uh, that a block size can it currently is. This can change in later versions of Minecraft, but as of 1.16.4, this value still works. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and make our fields. This makes it a lot cleaner. So here we're gonna say client ground equals event dot get player dot is on ground. Um, as you see, this is deprecated, but no need to worry. This method has never been removed. Um, it's deprecated because it's generally not recommended to you since it can be spoofed as far as I'm aware. So here, we're going to be using something called a modulus operator. And what this does is it does a little bit of division. Basically, if I put 1 here, and I have the number 10 here, this is going to output 0. And that's because it's going to go ahead and it's going to put this number into 10 until it can't put it in there anymore. And that once it, once it can't, it returns the number that's left. And basically, that is what a remainder is. So... With our ground y being event that to get y, we want to check if ground y fits in here. And we normally want to check if it equals zero. But I actually have something against this. And the reason that is, is because of the precision loss when it comes to Minecraft's math being calculated. Because it actually comes into the server as a, it's calculated as a float, but comes into the server with, as position. So it gets, it has a precision loss there because it gets convert it from a float to a double to back to a float to double blah so we want to give it a little bit of leeway and especially since the um in 1.8 the motion y is clamped and motion x and motion z are clamped so i uh, if motion x is less than 005 it would do so then it would go motion x equals zero and that basically would go ahead and not allow you to have any y value less than 0 0.005. And it's the same thing if it's negative. If it's greater than negative 005, it would be set to zero. So what the whole point of that is, is so it doesn't have an infinitely small delta y. But 1.9, that's not the case. So you'll get actual delta y's of like 003, and if you're unlucky, even less. Um, not too hard to account for, though. So, now that we have this here, we're going to go ahead and make our nofall check, and let's see if it works. So, we want to check if it isn't equals, of course, because if they're spoofing in the air, this would be true, and this would be false if they're not on the ground. And if they're in the, on the ground, but spoofing false, yes, this is a kind of nofall, then this will go ahead and flag. So, let's go ahead and flag for the player. So, so now that we have this here, um, to go ahead and let the player know what exactly is going on with the check and It's not really the thing that's going to make a bypass for them really I will explain at the end of the video how this check can be bypassed and how you should account for it So I will meet you on the test server 
Now that we're on the test server, I do want to preemptively answer the question about this client. I am not allowed to tell you who made it. It was not me. Um, but this is a private client. So, anyways, let's go ahead and test our no-fault check. So, as we can see, we can go, we're flagging this. So, let's go ahead and figure out what's going on here. And instead of flagging, what we will go ahead and do is we will send a debug. So, let's go ahead and send the player a message. And let's debug together why this check isn't working. Now that we reload. As we can see here, it doesn't match up in certain portions. And so here's why. I will go ahead and do this to make it a little bit obvious. So as you can see here, it says they're on the ground here, but they're off the ground. And here it says they're on the ground, but off the ground on the server side. The client ground is delayed by one tick. So let me go ahead and explain why this is. Up here is where the move event is being called by bucket. And so this is after it's all it's been handled. And here, you know, if it's canceled, it'll teleport the player. So down here, right here, is where the player ground is being set. And this is where player is on ground is going to grab from through Bucket's abstraction. And this is, of course, the ground being sent from the client. So this is going to be a tick behind. So the way we can solve this is A, use protocol lib in this really old base. Uh, to check for flyings um, and set up all the locations properly <laughs> or we can go ahead and just use bucket events and you can do either setting up the locations is not that hard but the check will work the same the only difference is that you can you'll have an updated ground and you don't have to do what I'm about to do so what we'll go ahead and do for er, this specific instance where we want to use a player move event is let's make a section for us to use so we'll say no fall and let's say public boolean l server ground. What we're going to want to do is we should set the last server ground here. So we want to grab the player data, of course. I always forget that the data class is not player data, but data player, because this base is a special snuffling. Now that we grabbed that, down here at the end of the check, we will go ahead and set it here. And so now that we change this, we should see it match up. So let's get rid of this debug. And let's go ahead and see if our check falses anymore. I'm surprised it's not falsing at the moment because I actually got this to false flag. So I find that very interesting. Let me... I am actually incredibly surprised right now. And derp, I just noticed that the anti-cheat didn't load. Oh god. Alright, let's go ahead and uncomment this. So now that we have that uncommented, let's go ahead and update that so we have the proper information when we debug the check. And I'll see you on the test server. Alright. Now that we're on here, we see we have a problem. Right when it reloads, it goes, uh-oh, uh-oh. So here's one way we can fix it. Most of the time, when players are on ground, they're, I mean, join the server or the server reloads, they're going to be on ground. So that'll fix most false flags there. That's fixed. So let's go ahead and jump around now. You see, it doesn't false when we jump around like we used to. We can even go up this stair and it won't false. Or we can go up this head, up these stairs. If we go up ladders, no falses. We can even, for example, oh. As you can see, it had a bit of a hiccup here. So let's turn that off. Let's go ahead and go on this carpet. And nope, no falses here, even in liquid. We have fly falses, and then we have no fall falses. Uh-oh. And that's because of a problem with the way we're checking ground. There can be a little bit of error, a little bit of play. And as you can see, now we're falsing on this because I'm pressing space bar. And so while on the server, my point Y is going to be 0.5, I'm actually not on the ground because my next predicted Y to the client is not less than zero. and in, But I am collided vertically, so it sends the client ground as false, even though I'm on the ground. Here's how we're going to fix this. So there's multiple ways we can fix this. So And also prevent bypasses due to buffer changes. We are going to implement a buffer threshold. 
So a buffer threshold allows a little bit of leeway for people to flag before they actually start flagging the check. And this is only ever going to work if the actual check flags way more than if it flags for legitimate people. So I guess we'll set the threshold to one. And now if on um, here, we'll set if data buffer is greater than zero, we'll go ahead and subtract it by one. So now that we need to prevent bypasses, we have some things that we can do. So we can say the player isn't near ground. And if they aren't near the ground, they can flag because all of our false positives appear when they're near the ground. That'll help. Now, here's a little bit of a problem with this check and why it can be bypassed. If I set my Y to 110.0 or 110.0, 0.015625 I bypass because it thinks I'm on the ground so I can actually spoof my client ground this way here's how you would check for that you would have a because how doing it like this gives us a lot more leeway into checking if they're on the ground is if you would have a separate check and what you would do is you would check if client ground is being spoofed and server ground is being spoofed but they're not near the ground. Now, this is for some reason is a little bit broken inside of the client. So we're actually not going to use this. But if you have a less broken bounding box system, which I will actually do a tutorial on, we're involving Atlas, then um, you should be good. There we go, that's fixed that. So let's go ahead and use Nofall. And now we flag for it. So hopefully you've learned something today. Make sure you fix that potential Y level exploit. Um, and that should be it. So yeah. Um, thank you all for watching. And of course in the description you can download the source code. So there's that. And uh, like and subscribe. Share the video around.